Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to the third episode of Elevate with Ankara. Today's video features an exclusive interview with CJ, the owner of House of Mami Wata, which is an Ankara fabric shop on Etsy. So if you are interested in this interview and to hear all about her journey with selling her Ankara fabrics and much more, please continue to watch. Hello, my name is Cherie. And I'm Talisha. And in this episode of Elevate with Ankara, we are going to be interviewing one of our favorite fabric store owners. Talisha, why don't you introduce our favorite fabric store owner? And so we are interviewing CJ and she is the owner of one of our favorite fabric stores and Kara fabric stores, as we previously said, which is House of Mami Wata. And so I'm just going to go ahead and ask a couple of questions to you, CJ, and you can kind of just answer them to the best of your ability so that our viewers can get, a, you know, a little bit more information about you and kind of, you know, just know what you have to offer. OK, awesome. And so. I introduced you as CJ. Is that what you normally go by or do you go by another name that maybe our your customers would know you by? CJ is the one nobody murders. So we just say CJ, <laughs> keep it nice and live. We don't add any extra syllables. CJ is good. Okay, well, great. Yes. And so where are you from? In, in yeah, so originally I was born in Nigeria, uh, but I grew up in Atlanta. So kind of here, there and everywhere. And I've lived pretty much everywhere in the U.S. So yeah okay. well great and what made you um why did you choose i should say to open up a fabric shop i think it really started when i was getting married so in my culture you have a traditional wedding which is sort of like um you know guess with Ankara with lace the traditional customs and then you would have a white wedding which is your more traditional wedding that you think of and so when I was looking for options for my sort of traditional um, outfits that I wanted to wear I would see stuff on Pinterest that I could not find the fabric anywhere I would go to like my local shops and none of the beautiful stuff I felt was there. So I said, well, you know, we just can't lie to the people. <laughs> we need to get this fabric and have it available for them to wear. So um, because I had that problem, actually, I ended up buying too much fabric, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> and then I sold some and just realized that maybe this could be a business. So originally I started off by trying to make like what um, envelope pillow covers. I was going to do bibs, things like that. But um, once I had children, I realized that I was telling myself a story because I don't have time. To, <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Oh, good. So that kind of goes into like the next question that I have for you, um, which that question is what made you choose to specialize in Ankara? So, you know, that kind of told that yeah. story. Is there more to that outside of that experience? Yeah, I mean, I, it is a fabric business, but in some ways I also think of it like being a cultural ambassador. I mean, before I got into this business, I was shopping at Joann's and Michael's and seeing those kind of fabrics and in comparison, um, they're not as bright. I don't necessarily relate to the imagery, the motifs. And so you can see with Ankara, you're having rich colors that look great on people with melanin. They look great on everybody, but if you're not used to necessarily seeing something made for you to come and see that, uh, those bold colors, um, that personality, it just felt like I was showing people more about Africa than what you would stereotypically see. And so um, I end up having a lot of conversations about fabric now. So, okay. yeah. Right. And what or how long have you been sewing with Ankara or making crafts? I know you mentioned the pillow yeah. cases and things like that. So yeah. um, how long have you been doing that? I would say probably about since 2014 and um my mother can sew right mm -hmm. but she didn't want to teach me so mm -hmm. 
she just had a horror story one time so she said i'm not doing this anymore that's I'm for there you. With you right so i had to get a groupon to learn how to sew and uh i got a groupon and took a local class here and they taught me how to turn on the machine which was so intimidating right taught me how to make a straight stitch you know that we i think our class was like to make pajamas or something so i think that was like 2012 2013 but once you can turn your machine on and make a straight stitch then it's you can learn everything else on YouTube. And I have yeah. to thank you guys because it's people <laughs> like you who are teaching people like us who don't really know what they're doing, uh, how to make a few things. So yeah, since about 2012, 2013, I've been sewing. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so um, thank you so much. Um, I think Cherie, I mean, I, you know, we have more questions for you, but I think Cherie is going to ask you another set of questions sure. that she had in mind. I do want to also mention that we can totally identify with shopping at Joann's and not necessarily always finding that perfect mm -hmm. fabric for us. Yeah. Or, and you know, one of the reasons why we started this series is because we've been so inspired and blown yeah. away by all the beautiful outfits, garments that oh, people yeah. have been using on car fabric. It always blows right. our minds. Isn't it? It, yes. it, it changes our mind. It yeah. is it amazing. Our mind about patterns. Like, yes. You can, one dress made in a basic broadcloth oh, or, yeah. uh, or eyelet and then you see it in Ankara fabric yeah. and it, all of a sudden it's festive all of a sudden right. it's show stopping right. yes so, well you can we, make I'm the most you. simple dress and it's not mm -hmm. going to and it's amazing because it mm -hmm. is going to look fabulous right. because of the designs yes. and i try to stay away from a bunch of lines when it comes to asking yeah. because i don't want to mess up the, yeah. the patterns within the fabric and it still looks absolutely fabulous if i look on my instagram feed my ankara prints have the highest amount of likes it's so, true it is so true mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't have anything else to add to that. I mean, that's the <laughs> truth, right? I mean, right. I don't have much more than, a, you know, I can only do a little bit, but it ends up <laughs> looking great because the fabric looks great already. So yes, yes, I'm yes. with it's you. True. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. true. Well, I'm going to be asking you some questions about your shop. Yes. Okay? Now, your shop is no stranger to most of us oh, women of color out here showing. Oh, thank you. Love your shop, thank but you. there are some viewers that maybe they haven't sewn with on Cara yes. Fabric for. Maybe they don't know where to start, like which stores to visit. And yeah. so we want to know, is your store online based or do you have a physical brick and mortar location? I do not have a physical uh, brick and mortar location at this time. And I think I was thinking more about it before COVID, but um, mm -hmm. you know, COVID reset the world. So <laughs> yeah. we're going to figure out what we're going to do. But for now I'm online. So I'm at www.houseofmommy, M-A-M-I-W-A-T-A, -A -A, mommywater.com. And I'm also on Etsy under the same shop name. Um, so yeah, not now, but, um, I'm thinking about it still. We're still now, online on the Like most people, because of the pandemic, we're all shopping online. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. I do want to say that your website has some very eye catching fabrics and it's made it very easy to shop your website. The pictures, the quality, okay. it's really great. Um, you already answered how long you've had your shop, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what we want to know is what makes your shop unique and special? Well, my sweet spot is bright and bold. I mean, Ankara comes in all different shades. It comes in all different uh, scales. But my sweet spot is going to be that bright, bold, normally large print. I have... Uh, ventured more into quilting fabric and quilters like smaller scale prints so I do do that and actually I I love to talk with people because they'll give me ideas of things to add to the shop and things they want to know but I like bright bold stuff so that's sort of my specialty um, and then other things that differentiate me is look I feel like once you purchase it, it belongs to you and I'm going to get it out the door to you. I'm not going to hold it for a day. <laughs> I will get it right out to you. I appreciate ASAP. that. ASAP. I'm beating Amazon. I'm beating the mailman. I'm going to beat everybody because it's yours. And a lot of times it's for weddings or a party or something and you just don't have time to play. So 
Uh, I mean, I have customers that'll say, look, I haven't got my package yet and I know it's not you, but what can you do? <laughs> and that's fine, but um, quick shipping, definitely try to be professional. I mean, I've purchased from people who, you know, have just talked to me any kind of way. So I always really try to work with people as long as they're semi-reasonable. Um, so those are the things that differentiate me. Um, I also have a lot of inventory, um, always trying to look for something. People love to mix and match. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm very much into hearing feedback and sort of acting on that as well as getting things out the door quickly, uh, having a good variety of things to choose from. So, yeah. That's great. So another question that I have for you is where do you source your fabric from? Does your fabric come from Africa? Where does it come from? Yes. And I'm so glad that you asked that question because I, uh, this is a whole topic. So <laughs> I always try to source my fabric from Africa first, but I think what people are really looking for is where is the fabric made? So many times you do get something from Africa, but it's not made in Africa. Just like here, you go to Walmart. Yes, you got it in Atlanta, Georgia, but it's not necessarily made that way. Um, so sometimes you are buying things that are Chinese fabrics or you're buying things that are made in India or Pakistan. And I'm not that really doesn't bother me but a lot of times i will get people who just want something made in africa from africa and increasingly that's tough i mean i i have my suppliers in africa who um especially during the pandemic they closed i mean some of the manufacturers yeah. in, they closed and they mm -hmm. are now trying to open up but you always have the socio-political backgrounds to contend with. Um, so I, I was just having a conversation with one of my biggest suppliers in Nigeria, and she said her accounts were frozen. Wow. Uh, Nigeria was trying to force them to return to domestic manufacturing. But you can imagine if you put a lien on someone's accounts, you know, mm -hmm. their whole life falls apart. That's not necessarily good for business. So, and you know, you always have to battle, you know, have to, um, contend with things like air freight which has gone through the roof ocean freight everything so you like the supply chain stuff that's been happening in the background has been a zoo so you just have to be flexible yeah i i think that that seems to be an issue with a lot of small yeah, business owners right. is supply right right yeah well and i'm happy that yeah. oh i'm sorry go ahead no no I was just going to say that I'm happy that you're able to continue to thrive after this COVID. Yeah, no, there was a point you know? in COVID that, I mean, I think it was really the turn of this year, last year, where like nothing was coming through the ports. And it wasn't just me, right? I turned on mm -hmm. the TV, the toy manufacturers were complaining, the electronics manufacturers, everybody was feeling the crush. And I think they were, there was a backup at the LA port, um, Savannah port, everybody. So, and then all of it came at once after right. the holiday season right it's like oh okay thanks <laughs> so you just you just you know life punches you and you just yeah. keep going what can you do well as we are very inspired by all the lovely prints you have in your shop and we primarily sew garments i mean talisha does amazing handbags yes. i mean Listen, wristlets, big bags, <laughs> she can do it, okay? That's why um, I said, I don't know why y'all want to talk to me because oh, you guys are the ones. <laughs> you okay? You guys have the you talent. You can do it without the product. Contributing <laughs> to the God-given talent that you have. But that's listen, okay. listen, you have a great eye for fabric. Thank you. Without that great eye, we couldn't create these handbags. And I'll garments. accept that. I'll, I'll take that. But what I want to ask you is, do you have any special like tricks, tips for using this fabric? This is a fabric that I find is probably one of the easier fabrics to work yeah. with. But even still, for someone who's just gotten into sewing, which some of our viewers haven't even started sewing yet. They're just curious about sewing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what are some tips and tricks that you have for sewing with Ankara? 
Well, one thing that tends to really throw people off is like the wax texture. So if, I mean, that's a common thing in Africa for you to have the wax fabric. That's just, you know, that's the origin of fabric. That's how it started. But sometimes people are like really thrown off by that. And you can just wash it. If you wash it in cold water, I always recommend cold water because the fabrics come from all sorts of manufacturers. That wax texture is going to go away. So you should never be intimidated by the wax. I personally like the wax fabrics because i'm not as skilled as some of you guys so i can fold it and you know my hem will stay just like that i don't have to <laughs> iron uh, it will stay just and so that's great to me uh, another thing um i get a lot of concern about are the manufacturer's labels so most people have never dealt with them but Typically on, on, on car, you'll have anywhere from three to four or five adhesive manufacturer's labels. Believe it or not, some people really love those labels. And then there are some people who really hate those labels, but they're really easy to remove with a warm iron. You just apply it to the reverse side or even on top, and that will sort of weaken the adhesive and you can peel it right off. Um, a product, sometimes you'll have leftover adhesive and there's a product called Gugon that's sold in Target, Walmart, just pretty much any typical, even your grocery store. You can apply that to it and wash it off. But whatever you do, don't sew a garment with the manufacturer's label <laughs> and ship it to your customer. That's happened well, to me before. Well, I want to say that um, my first round of, I mean, and, and even now, you know, as I move forward with purchasing Ankara, my first big like bundle came from you and i you know the only thing i could think of was those labels because yeah. i had purchased mm -hmm. ankara fabric off of the internet before yeah. and it just came i didn't know what to do so i just cut around it but i, when I, received, <laughs> Yo, when I tried I, to wash it before i knew i just washed the whole thing and mm -hmm. it came right back to me but when i so got bad. your package you had a card in there yeah. that gave instructions and i'm like this is gold oh my goodness yeah. i put it on thank my you for saying that thank you yeah and it's like you know and yeah. i don't even have to look into because i was like getting ready to go down the rabbit hole of youtube to try to yep. figure it out yep. so i didn't have to cut around it yeah so th yeah thank you for that because You're there welcome. are people that are just getting into using ankara fabric so mm -hmm. they just simply do what sharia and i had done which is just mm -hmm. cut around it look and i was not one necessarily of them. what you want to yeah. do I was yeah. one of them. I left it on in there. After I washed it and it didn't come off, I said, well, this must be the Lord. I'll just turn this inside <laughs> out and I'll wear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've even, I don't know if this is a bad thing, but I've even like wet a paper towel and steamed it to try yeah. to lift it up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It, yeah. But I do have a question. Is there a reason why there's so many labels on there? Like, does that differentiate it from a different type? Or well, you know, or yeah, it's a quality thing. It's sort of like, when people go buy Gucci and then they go use the Gucci bag to carry everything. So it's like a mm -hmm. status symbol. So, okay. you know, especially if there are bigger name brands that you really okay. like, you want that label to be there. And if you're giving it as a gift, which culturally, a lot of times you might, let's say, you know, it's, it's very common to give fabric culturally. So that label is like an extra, okay, you know, I really tried, like I really mm -hmm. thought of you um, and it's brand new. So there are reasons why they like it. And I think the manufacturers are selling worldwide. And so in Africa, it's not, you know, it's, it's fine. It's people want to see the label. They want it there, but when like you're thinking about right it's like a stamp of approval it's like i got you the top of the line or i got you this or whatever um so yeah it's i mean i wish they would take the labels off or just make them easy to remove because mm -hmm. there are some labels you can literally peel off no adhesive is left but some labels are like what is this gorilla glue right. <laughs> what is going on right well i have one question in regards to that now um of course because it's a hassle you know you have to you know before you wash it you you know you have another step by removing the labels yeah. right so but um i did receive a but um six yard pack of entire fabric and although i don't like the steps of having to remove the labels i didn't have any labels and i felt a certain type of way yeah, so, <laughs> so what does that mean when you receive a bundle and you don't have any labels yeah. well you know that's 
can mean a lot of different things. And it didn't come to you. <laughs> well, you know, but I have recently received fabric that didn't have the label. And I did, I mean, I didn't mind, but, you know, now I had to put something over. Okay, there might be this uh, adhesive patch and this might be what it is. But sometimes it's a customs issue. Sometimes mm -hmm. the fabric goes through different countries, which have their own regulations about what can be on the package. So sometimes they take it off. Um, sometimes um maybe somebody requested that it be removed i mean i had a conversation with one supplier and i was like hey you know if you're gonna custom print this for me can it not be there but she had already put it there maybe she just misinterpreted me and she just went to manually take them off so there's lots of different reasons why that may happen but a lot of times it might be a customs requirement thing mm -hmm. okay Okay, so this question isn't on the list, but I'm going to ask it to both yes. of you because I think it's a, a good question. Please. Um, do you have any tips for selecting the, the right type of print for the right project? So is there something that you think about when you're considering which fabric to choose for your project? I mean, I think that's personal maybe i mean for like you know the quilting set like i know they like smaller scale stuff and i know if it's mm -hmm. like a handbag you made and i know if it's for sale sometimes people like the smaller scale stuff because no matter how they cut it, it's sort of going to look uniform so if they mm -hmm. invest the money to get the photography and all that stuff they won't cut it and it'll look totally different from what they put on their website and then that's an issue um but like for skirts you know sort of the bigger pieces tent dresses were big at one point anything that's big and like doesn't have a lot of lines um i like the bigger scale stuff because that shows you the full beauty of the design mm -hmm. and yeah. i like that bold statement you know that where'd she get that from right mm -hmm. i know i look if i see you in the street and you have something amazing i'm gonna tell you <laughs> No, okay. I'm not going to tell you what I do or nothing. I'm just going to say, wow, you look great. And I mean, so yeah, so depending on what it is that you, I, I feel like more for the business set, if they invest the time and money to get pictures made, product pictures, then they want something that's going to look pretty uniform. So they look for something a little smaller. Yeah. Well, what is there, what would you like to share with our audience? Is there anything special that you want our audience to know about your shop? um uh come visit my shop come take a look around <laughs> um i mean yeah I, I specialize in the bright and bold fabrics uh not only do i do ankara i do um Basin, which is sort of it can come in cotton or polyester and it's normally it, it has designs but it's like embossed it doesn't have all of the colors so it'll have usually one color and you'll see designs embossed in it um people try that out sometimes it's it's interesting because it's cotton but it's shiny or maybe polyester but it's shiny uh i also sell gele which is the if you look of the ornate head pieces you might see uh african women wearing that was be something you would use um, gele for but not for clothes so <laughs> don't buy gele for That's clothes unless, know. <laughs> unless you don't want it to move like if you're making a corset or something and you need that <laughs> extra structure okay do that but otherwise don't do it um <laughs> And then I work with brides. Um, I, I guess I don't have that on my website, but I do work a lot of times with brides um, who are looking to have like their entire family wear the same. It could be mm -hmm. Ankara. I just spoke to a bride in Philadelphia just now who's getting married in July and they want to wear lace. So I don't normally carry lace because people have their colors. I can't manage all of that, but <laughs> I do personal shop for brides. So, which is why sometimes I'll say, hey, anyone want to work with the bride in Philadelphia? or you know wherever so so cj i have another question for you i um know that you get this question and i know other uh people i have seen it actually like on instagram or in the comments on youtube when it comes to ankara fabrics is it okay for other cultures outside of the african culture to wear ankara fabrics what a great question because i get it all the time and the short answer is absolutely yes uh, ankara fabric um even historically wasn't originated in africa it's something that africans have 
adopted and made their own. And I personally don't see anything wrong with other cultures, anybody really wanting to try out Ankara, uh, you know, wear it, embrace it, celebrate it. I think that's amazing. I think that's what we're all doing. Uh, I think sometimes people feel like because they are using something, it would be considered cultural appropriation. Uh, and for me, technically, you would have to be saying, you know, I created this or, or my ancestors made this. And, and, and if you're not saying that, which I don't, I've never encountered that. Most people just want to wear it, play around with it, experiment, have fun, love it. I don't see any problem with that at all. So I so glad that you asked that question because I get it all the time. There's no one who should feel hesitant about wearing Ankara because it looks good on everybody. Yeah. Well, I have one additional question. Yeah. What about the symbols? Are there certain symbols within the Ankara prints that maybe people should stay away from or is everything okay? Or, you know, like, because I heard some of the symbols or the, you know, um, images are symbolic. So. Now that is a good question. So let me say this. Um, the cultures that I found that have emphasized more of the imagery and symbolism are normally in in the country of Ghana. And so there are fabrics that are reserved for special ceremonies, like the naming of a newborn child or like a funeral. And then if you get into different uh, colors and symbolism in, in Kente fabric, some of those are reserved for specific historical or royal families, etc. I don't know that the Ankara that I'm selling, uh, uh, infringes or um, degrades that history in any way and most of the time that sort of kente is actually woven so it's not the fabric like I'm selling it's like woven like someone on a loom is you know oh. doing their own tech so and that kind of Ankara you wouldn't cut like you know make a skirt or something like out of that that's normally that fabric is sort of worn in its entirety but that's a good question um and then some, a lot of times as well, some fabric has different meanings depending on what country you're from. Uh, but none of them that I've ever heard are, you know, exclusive to certain, you know, people or anything like that. I did, I lived in Ghana for a little bit, so I did actually study fabric and meaning and uh, uh, behind the fabric, but um that's a great question. Sometimes people don't know what they're wearing though. Mm -hmm. And uh, like there's a fabric that's like called the evil eye and it's like, don't look at my husband, <laughs> you know, but it's like, it, de it depends on what part of Nigeria or what part, you know, what African country you're, you know, you're from. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but yes, there's a, there's a lot of interesting stories uh, in the fabric. So I, I may need to do something on YouTube about the stories. Mm -hmm. And do you know how that originated since, because um, like you were saying earlier, how the African wax print fabric or the Ankara fabric, I should say, was adopted mm -hmm. by the Africans, you know, I believe through the mm -hmm. Dutch, right? And so, yes. so how did those symbolic things come about if it did not originate? Did they just kind of like look at the photos and decide yeah. this is going to go for this and this is going to go for that? You know, that's a good question. And I can't tell you for sure, but sort of anecdotally is like certain designs came out while certain things were happening. And so mm -hmm. by association, okay. those things were happening um, culturally or politically. And, and then again, things are happening and those things are different depending on where you're from. And right. so sometimes those meanings just came about because of what was going on. And this is a fabric that it's sort of like a song, right? This song comes out and this is what's going on in your life. And no matter where you are in time, like that's this association for you. Um, so that's some of it. Uh, sometimes also um, there are patterns that are printed for certain groups. And so then they may 
attribute the meaning to that you know, like it may be a women's collective or it may be a certain type of trader group that uses this and so that's another way that meaning can become okay so there are some like even though they may not be printed there may not be manufactured there there are like certain requests where they get specialized printed fabrics and then it's just dis distributed throughout the countries in africa even till today like if you have like all the politicians, they'll have their own Ankara, you know, mm -hmm. it normally has their face on it and then some sort of something in the background. Uh, so that's something that'll come out. So there's a, there are some groups like women's international women's day in Cameroon or something like that. That happens every year. And every year they ask me for that fabric. Mm -hmm. I don't have any suppliers in Cameroon, but I love the idea. And I've seen the fabric because it's celebrating uh, feminism and international <laughs> women's day and things like that. So that's another one you'll see in like, okay, whatever motif they're using every year will now become associated with something about feminism. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, it's Makes big. Sense. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. still big. If someone is like turning 60, they may have a thousand yards of whatever their face printed on a fabric and give it to everyone at the party. And mm -hmm. everyone's going to make what they want to make out of it and mm -hmm. come and, you know, show their different styles. So, yeah. So, yeah, sometimes there's a lot going on in that fabric. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I know you said you couldn't say 100% for sure, but the, the, what you did the information that you did give us yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense and it brings yeah. a lot more light onto that because yes. i you know just kind of wondered so yeah yeah if you guys ever get a chance to go to um just a really any west african wedding you'll see more of that or like a retirement party or something so yeah yeah, I've, I've, I don't know what part of the countries or what, what part of the continent, I should say, that the uh, weddings are from, but I've gone to a lot of them and I <laughs> I love them. I just love them and all the, the, the money thing. And the all money them. thing. Everybody <laughs> wants the money thing. Make it rain on me. I want to be different. Yes. And it's so funny because my sister just got married this past um, September and we did the money thing at her wedding. I know. Just we I know. So, yeah, Look. I mean, so, yeah. It's, it's, it's a very nice experience. It is amazing. And that's, again, that's like going back to why am I, why am I in this business, right? Like to bring the culture, you know, mm -hmm. we're all connected. Mm -hmm. And there was such enthusiasm after Black Panther that people really wanted to know. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we'll probably close out this interview, um, but I just want to thank you so much. Absolutely. For, You're so welcome. Oh my gosh, for taking the time to sit with us and let us know all the special things about your shop. I know yeah. that our subscribers and followers will absolutely love hearing everything about you um, and what you have to share with us. Um, Talisha, is there anything you want to say? Um, yes. Um, so just to our audience, you know, like Cherie said, thank you so much for, you know, giving us all of this information that I'm sure is very helpful um, to even people that don't even inquire about it. They may just wonder and just have never asked about it, but this is going to give them more information. And for those who do want to try it for the first time or for those who just want more, CJ... <laughs> Our guest here has graciously offered us with a special code that will allow our viewers to get a free cut of Ankara fabric with the purchase of $40 or more. This will be a mystery fabric. So whichever fabric CJ has in hand that she can give on out, you make that purchase of $40 and you will get that cut. So, you know, $40 is not a lot. You can get uh, six yards for 40 bucks and then you'll get your additional. Maybe it would be even something that you can pair with the fabric that you purchase and you can color block, you know, do all types of fancy things. Um, but we will have more information about that in the description box below. So yes, definitely make your purchase, use your code and show us something fabulous. Tag CJ, she is on Instagram yes. and tag us. And yeah, we definitely want to see. <laughs> awesome. Well, stay tuned to our next episode. And Talisha, you want to tell them what our next episode's about? Yes. 
For the next episode, we are going to be introducing the first garment that we will be making with our Ankara fabric. And my Ankara fabric will be something that is featured from CJ's um, shop. So look at that, guys. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, so I, uh, do you have anything else, Sheree? No, I don't. I think I think we should probably close it out. Thank you. Oh, you're I so feel, welcome. I feel like I learned so much from you today. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I didn't know I knew so much. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you, thank you, thank you once again, and to our viewers, make sure you give her a thank you in the comment section below, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs yes. up and subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified whenever we have more episodes of this series, and yeah i think i think that's all thank you guys thank you so, so much. much thank you bye thank you so much again for tuning in to the third episode of elevate with Ankara, and make sure that you stay tuned into next week's episode which is episode number four where we introduce our very first garment within this series and we will talk in detail which pattern we're going to be using and how we are going to elevate that garment with the Ankara fabric the videos will be separate, so there will be an individual video on Sheree's channel and there will be one on my channel and we are making different makes. So you definitely want to stay tuned to both of the channels. Thank you so much for watching.